Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown and you have tuned in to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And if you're here for the first time, then welcome because you're fixing to go back and binge through three years worth of stories. And if you're one of my regulars, I know that you're here for the same reason that I am, because every day is new in real estate. And there's so many things that HGTV does not tell people it's our job to tell those stories. And so today I'm very excited to have Tracy Ellis on the show. Tracy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lee. I just love listening to your voice. I could listen to that accent all day. All right. So it's totally not getting out of jail free card. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm so sorry for anybody that doesn't have an accent and also has no filter because I, I don't have a filter. Maybe I need one. But Tracy, tell our, our listeners where you're located, how long you've been in real estate, anything they should know about you that makes your story that much more fun. We are located uh, in a suburb in Chesterfield, Missouri, about 30 miles from St. Louis. Uh, My husband and I have been in business for about 20 years. Um, We have a team here in the area and we host uh, six weekly radio shows. And we've been doing the radio shows for about eight years. And about six years ago, we started our our own um, luxury real estate magazine. So we distribute that as well, just trying to give our clients as much exposure as we can on air and in print. We do about $40 million this year. So we do a lot of business here in the St. Louis area. Our average home sale price here is about $189,000. So you're in a super affordable market, even in a, a world where things are getting more and more expensive. It is. Prices are going up so, so quickly and have been for the past few years. You know, St. Louis is still doing great in the housing market. I know a lot of other areas, uh, agents in other states I'm talking to, or I'm hearing a lot of uh, feedback that they have a, a lot of inventory. Their homes aren't moving, but in the St. Louis area, they're still moving pretty swiftly. And for the record, listeners, we're recording this in October of 2019. So full disclosure, all market conditions change all the time. And you should always ask your local realtor about market conditions and don't necessarily assume that Tracy's idea here portrays to wherever you are when you listen to this. And I should also let you know, consumer friends, when she says that she and her husband did $40 million in real estate, She did not put $40 million in her pocketbook, and she did not fill up a bathtub with that in dollar bills and swim around like Scrooge McDuck. That is the total amount of the house sales that they did. If you add up this $200,000 house plus this $300,000 house plus this $500,000 house, now you did a million dollars in volume, which is why you should be very, very nervous about a real poor whose business card says they are a million-dollar agent because they might have just sold three houses and trying to make it sound big. Don't worry about volume consumer listeners. Uh, Tracy was trying to give her credibility to her realtor part of the audience because, Tracy, I probably should have told you that at least uh, 70% of our listeners are consumers on this podcast, and so they don't always know all of our internal language for the business. So I want to know more about these radio shows and magazine that you've created. So how do you have time to do all of that and sell houses? Because those are all pretty big endeavors. They really are, but it's a team effort. I'm very blessed that my husband is my partner. Rick is more the tech brain of our team, um, and I'm more the marketing and media. We have great agents on our team. So when I talk about volume, I'm talking as a team effort. But uh, the radio shows we host on Wednesdays, and we you know try to knock them all out uh, in a few hours. But it's a great way for us to connect with our community, highlight local businesses and what they bring to housing you know there's so much having to do with housing when you're talking about roofing electrical plumbing landscaping so we have a lot of those guests on our show and i think in today's market after going through the recession that's kind of when we started doing the radio shows and then the magazine because we felt like we needed to do everything we could to give our clients more let's be honestly you know i think people hear the volume or think oh real estate agents make a lot of money, but they don't realize all the cost. Marketing is very expensive. 
And uh, when I kept, you know, we do a lot of luxury real estate too, and it's very expensive. And they, those listings, you carry a lot longer, you know, sometimes a year or more. And at some point you're like, okay, I can't keep paying to advertise these houses. So finally, at some point we're like, we're going to have to do our own magazine just to be able to make sure we are giving our clients as much marketing as we can. So it's a, a very strict timeline. We only do the magazines quarterly because there's no way we could keep up with it on a monthly basis and take great care of our clients, which is important to us to have great customer service. Do you let random people call in to your shows or are they all controlled content? No, we do not let random people call in. And it's not for any reason. Uh, it's what I do do is I say, if you have questions you'd like answered, email us and we'll answer those next week on the show. So we try to address those questions. But the reason we don't do that is because we usually pre-record on Wednesdays because obviously in real estate, we work a lot of evenings and a lot of weekends and we can't record on the weekends, even though our show airs on the weekend. So we pre-record on Wednesday during the day. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for for call-ins and my husband being a tech person, our studio is in our office. So call-ins would be a little bit more difficult to do. Okay. Well, I was just curious because that would be a lot of random information. Okay. So the pattern of our podcast is always to show the sides of real estate nobody sees. And you've already talked a little bit about the back end side, but that's not super fun and exciting. And our listeners like to hear about porn and sex and dead bodies and stuff like that. So I know you've seen things out showing properties and selling houses whether it's in the suburbs or in the city of St. Louis. So I'm excited to hear what in the world you've seen that you couldn't believe or the situation you wound up in by accident or, or on purpose too. We never know how you wind up in things. So I've seen a lot of things. I always tell our clients, you know, sometimes when you show up to a home, they're embarrassed because, I mean, let's face it, we're helping clients sometimes through a very difficult time, a divorce or a death of a family member, and um, not all is planned. And so it's our job to help them get through that process and get their home ready for the market. But I think one of the most shocking things that happened to Rick and I was we pulled up to show a house one time and we we're noticing like, you know, dry or not drywall, but two by fours and wood all over windows and plywood and, and, you know, where the glass had been broken out and we're thinking, what is going on here? And so we go up to the door and, you know, my throat's kind of burning a little, but I'm not thinking much about it. We go in the house and immediately like, you know, I'm noticing my eyes are on fire, my throat's on fire, the carpet's gone. And I'm like, what is happening here? And then my client starts coughing, then I'm coughing and we're all running out of the house. And I'm like, what happened? Something is wrong. So I call the agent and I'm like, what's the deal with this house? Like there's plywood over all the windows and, you know, two by fours nailed on top and my throat is on fire. Come to find out that particular home was on the news a couple of weeks ago where someone had barricaded themselves inside. There was a police shootout. The person, you know, died in the home uh, with a shootout with the police and tear gas was used. So I was pretty upset that it wasn't disclosed. You know, before you enter the home, you might want to know that tear gas was used in the home because, you know, it really affected us and our eyes, throat, everything for, uh, for the rest of the day. It was kind of shocking. So I didn't know that tear gas lingered in a house because I've not ever been around tear gas myself. How long does it stay? Forever? Um, I think that it has to be, it's what I was told is it really needs to be mitigated depending on what it got on in the home, the walls. Uh, all I know is it had been two weeks prior when it happened and we were on fire, like our eyes, our nose. So I'm sure a lot was used because all the windows were broken out. I mean, I don't know the uh, all those dynamics, but when all the windows are gone and plywood's on, I'm sure there was a lot of tear gas in that house. But you know, you would also have thought that, that additional ventilation would have made the tear gas come out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But that was probably one of my worst experiences. But I've also been in homes where, you know, I've seen it all as we have in real estate now at this point, where unfortunately there's fecal matter on the floor. You know, I've seen it all. 
So my husband, uh, in the early years, when those homes would come into play, I would call him on the way home and be like, have a trash bag down in the laundry room floor. And I would just take my, my clothes off right there. And as I entered my home, throw them in the washing machine, because, you know, you go through these homes sometimes by the time you leave, you're like, Oh, I don't even want to get my vehicle. But, uh, that's a small percentage, you know, the majority are wonderful and we have great clients, but of course you're always going to have those homes. And as I say, I'm kind of numb to it now. It's just like a job you go through, you focus, tell them what they need to do and, and you get it done. Well, it's where actually it can be an advantage to have been a realtor during the Great Recession between 07 and 13, because the things we saw then we mostly don't see right now because people are not in the kind of dire straits they were in then. So if you are a consumer and you're hiring a realtor, if they've not been a realtor since the Great Recession, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you want to be paying attention when the next recessionary cycle hit because the smartest agents are going to go get themselves a lot of education. And those of y'all that were realtors during the last one, you need to reach out to the young realtors around you and help get them prepared because we're going to need all hands on deck whenever something goes sideways again, because it always does. I mean, bull markets don't last forever. They don't die of old age, but we know that things will change and you've got to be prepared for condition scenarios in addition to financial scenarios and it's like Tracy said, I mean, you, you do get a little numb to it, which is a little depressing, honestly, but you also know, learn how to walk people through it and, and show how they can still buy a house with additional ventilation and tear gas inside. So I have to ask, did the buyers buy that house? Was it a smoking enough deal or they did not want to buy that one? Absolutely not. We never got past uh, the front uh, great room when we came in the doors. They were done and ready to move on. And, you know, it was just something I've never forgotten. And I always make sure now as an agent, any anything like that, that I think another agent would like to know. I've never had that in one of my own listings, but I always disclose to them, you know, certain situations just so they have a heads up before they're going into the house. So, Tracy, if somebody is curious about what you're doing over there in Chesterfield and they have questions about finding your team for real estate services or they want to talk to you about your radio show or your magazine, how can people find you and Rick and your people? Rick and I are with EXP Realty in the Chesterfield area. And you can always visit tracyellis.com. That's T-R-A-C-Y-E-L-L-I-S.com. You can email me at tracy at tracyellis.com or call me direct at 636 636- Two nine nine three seven zero two. By the way, people, I know y'all didn't write anything down because you were too busy thinking about tear gas, cats and dogs and smells and things. So it's okay because all of Tracy's information, which also leads you to Rick, will be in the show notes for this episode. So y'all can reach out with any of your needs in the St. Louis market. And the last question I have to ask, I forgot to ask it before, is Chesterfield, Missouri, where Chesterfield cigarettes came from? Not that I'm aware of. I don't know, actually. I'll have to Google that myself and find out, but I'm not aware of that. No. I'm just curious because being from North Carolina, I'm always interested in tobacco history for some reason, even though I am not a smoker. I'm fascinated by it. So if Chesterfield cigarettes are from there, you should maybe buy some vintage packs and give them away the next marketing. But Tracy, thank you for coming on the podcast. And I'm always excited to find people that are doing a million zillion projects and are doing them well. So thank you for your dedication to great real estate in the St. Louis market. Thank you so much, Lee. And we're looking forward to having you on our radio shows in a couple of weeks. And don't worry, people, I'll post the link so y'all can listen in and see what Tracy and I talk about over there. So if you are a real cool broker, investor, inspector, lender, or anybody related to real estate, even a normal buyer or seller, you've got a story to tell, message me at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the social networks to be featured in a future episode. And in the meantime, you should totally subscribe for more because we have great fun over here. And in the meantime, we will see you later. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.